Uh, hi everyone, and uh, welcome to this set of uh, questions uh, related to uh, regression. So we'll have multiple questions that solve uh, different uh, types of regression problems. Now, here in these questions, basically, I will give you the final formula. I want to derive the formulas that will be used um, in, in solving these problems, but I will leave in the video description a link to a video that describes this formula. So if you are interested to find how this formula is found or derived, you can go to that link and you can basically find the rational, the mathematical derivation for this specific uh, formula. So let's start with the first question here. So here we want to find a linear function that best fits the following data points. So this is the X and this is the Y data points. And you can clearly see here there is no uh, zero intersection. So uh, the, the model that we will be using here is basically YI is equal to A0 plus A1 times XI. So this is the general linear uh, model. So our objective here is to find A0 and basically A, A1. To start with, we need to create this table. In this table, we will just write x and y value, the same x and y value here. We will have x squared and x times y. So basically, for example, this is x squared, x squared, and so on and so forth. This is the, the resultant multiplication of x times y. So y times 1 times 25 is 25, and so on and so forth. And in the last row, is basically the summation of each of those columns. Now the formula here for finding A1 is equal to N, which is the number, basically the number of uh, variable or rows, which is seven here, times the summation of X times Y, which is, is equal to five by four minus, the summation of x, which is 17.5, times the summation of y, which is 214, divided by, again, n, which is basically here is 7, times the summation of x squared, which is 50.75, minus the summation of x, which is 17.5 all squared, and when you do the calculation, you will find that A1 is 2.714286. Again, how we found this formula, uh, you will see a link that will take you to the uh, description or to the part of uh, the course that talks about the derivation of A1. Then we'll find A0. A0 is Y average minus A1 times X average. So y average is the summation of all y, y values, which is 214, divided by the total number, which is 7, minus a1, which is 2.714286, times x average. x is basically 17.5 divided by 7. If you do the calculation, you will find that your a0 is equal to 23. 78571. So now I know A0 and A1. I can find my model, which is your y is equal to A0 23.78571 plus 2.714286 times your variable x. So that is basically your equation. Let's go for the second question. In the second question says here, again, we want to find the linear function that best fit uh, this data points, but here, note that the y-intercept. Here, the x and the y will have a y-intercept. So basically, your line will be something like this. And for this, we use a different formula and a different model. So our model now is just simply yi equal to a1 times xi, where a1 is basically your, your slope. So uh, this is the data point. So we'll have x and y, x, y, so you multiply, and x is square. And the formula for a1 is basically i from 1 to 6, because we have 6, basically. 
x i y i so you multiply x so this is your x y uh, x times y so this is the summation so this is the number for uh, for this uh, for the uh, numerator for the denominator is the summation of x square which is 2.2 so if you do the calculations you will find that your a1 is equal uh, to 10.62573 so your equation now your y is equal to this constant 10.62573 times the variable the variable x so that is your basically your second second equation let's go to the third question now in the third question we want to fit a polynomial of degree three so a third order polynomial that fits this data so now we are moving from the linear models to non-linear models okay now what is the model look like it will look like this y i equal to a zero a one a2, A3, so we have four variables, and we, the highest order is the third order polynomial, and basically this is your error that you have in your in your model. You don't have to uh, to write this because we will not find the, the error here. Okay, so now we need to generate a table, and this table is, we have x, okay, so this is your x value, which is coming from here, and this is your y value which is coming from the second row here from that this is your x and this is y but we have to generate xi square xi cube xi power 4 and so on and so forth and x times y y times x square y times x cube and then we do all the calculations at the last row we do the the summation of all these variables okay again why this table and how we can extract these values, the description of this, you will find it in the, uh, in the description of this video. Now, this will yield the following matrix, okay? Now, this matrix is a four by four because we have four variables. So this is our unknowns. This is your A0, A1, A2, and A3. And this is your matrix. Start with N, which is the number of variable, which is basically equal to six. Summation of x, which is 7.5. Summation of x squared, which is five. And uh, basically, uh, sorry, 13.75 and so on and so forth. And this is equal to summation of y, which is 1.42. And you can have all values here. So that is basically, I'm getting all the numbers from the table here and put it in this matrix form. It's a four by four system. I need to solve for A0, A1, A2, and A3 to find my polynomial. Now, how we can solve this? You can try, you can solve it using uh, Gaussian elimination, for example, and we have discussed that before. So after you solve these uh, set of problems, that is the solution for a0 a1 a2 and a3 so your function or your polynomial y is equal to 0 0.0033 plus 0.4971 times x minus 0 0.2739 times x square plus 0 0.0511 times x cube it's very important that you try to solve these get these numbers by yourself not just watching them uh, because uh, watching is easy but you try to solve them you have to make sure that you really understand how you can extract all these numbers and how to solve this set of uh, of equations but as i said because we covered that before there is no need to uh, redo it again so assume that everyone knows how to deal with the four by four system as i mentioned using gaussian uh, uh, elimination and also i will keep a link for the lectures about gaussian eliminations as well now see you find now this data is following an exponent function so we want to find the curve that really represents us. Okay, now, so the function will be y equal to a, a constant, e to the power of b, x. So the two unknowns that we have is a and is this b. Now, our job is basically to linearize this equation as we have done that 
in the uh, in the course uh, videos how uh, we or first of all why we need to do this because if you try to minimize the error using the least square technique here you will end up have solving uh, the linear equations which make it very hard to find the value of a and b but if we first linearize the equations and then we can easily go go back so how to do that now every equation is different usually you will be given this equation so it will be said exponent function and you will be given the equation and you need to figure out a way how i can make this linear so for this one easily you can take the lin of both sides so you'll have lin of y i equal to lin of a plus basically your b x i which is lin of e to the power of b x i is b x i so that will be your a zero and b itself will be your a a one okay now we need to create a data x and y then we will have now the new y value it's lin y or you can call it y star sometimes you call it y star this is the new y uh, value and then we need to find x squared and x times y star so this is like exactly solving a linear equation that's exactly and your now so this is like comes like your y i star equal to a zero plus a one times x i no x i is exactly the same like the x so there's no change about the x but the y star is the one that is we, we are changing so after uh, doing this you will find your a1 is again this is our old stars here y stars not the original y is the converted y and if you do the calculation you find this is equal to minus 0 0.04441 and your a0 same summation of again y star here is taking the average of this so you will find this is equal to 1.33537 now our problem is not yet solved i found a1 now a1 is b so this is your b i found b but a0 is not the capital a so you need to find a your a is take the inverse of this relationship so a is basically nothing but e to the power of a0 and this will give you 3.801404. So from these two value, your function y, now this is the actual function, is equal to a, which is 3.801404, e to the power of minus 0 0.04441. So that is your, your function. Our last question here, we want to find a saturation curve. Okay, so what is this saturation curve? What is the formula for the saturation curve? As I said, again, you don't need to actually remember these functions. They are usually are provided by the examiner. They will give you in the same question or maybe at the end of the exam as an appendix with all the functions, the exponent function, the power function, the saturation, and so on and so forth. So that is basically the curve or the formula for the, the saturation function. Now, again, our objective here is to linearize this. So the best way is trying to take the inverse of both sides. So take the inverse, you will have here 1 over yi equal to b plus xi divided by a times xi. So this will be equal to 1 over a plus b over a xi. So now 1 over a is your a0, b over a is basically your a1. Now your, so your function now is equal to y star is equal to a0 plus a1 times x 
star. Now the x star is one over the original x, the y star is one over the original y. Okay, so here this is y. We need to have x star here and y star here. So all these will be stars. Okay, the, the modified value of x of y to have the linearized function. So it is one over x. So this is x and y. This is the original data. This is the original data that you have here in the table. This is your x and this is your y. Now you take one over x. So you just take the inverse of all the x values, one over y. And then you find x star squared, not x, the original x, but this x. Because now this is basically the one that is used in your data to linearize your model. So you have to figure how I can go from the nonlinear model to the linear model. But you don't need to remember the formula itself as I, uh, I mentioned. Now you will uh, find your A1. So now all this again will be all stars. This is the modified values for the X and for the Y. And when you do the substitution, this is equal to 0.5. Then A0, this is basically the star, and this is the star, and we have A1 already calculated. So this will give you also 0.5. Okay, now let's go back to the original value. Now your A0, your a0 from this, your a0 is equal to 1 over a from this formula, the original formula, okay? So it's basically equal to uh, 1 over 1 over a. So 1 over a, a is 1, 0.5, so 1 over 0.5 is equal to 2. Now, your b over a is equal to a1. So your b is equal to a1 times a. a1 is basically 0.5. a is equal to 2. So this will give you, give you 1. So your function y is equal, now go back to the original one, a times xi, so it's 2 times x, divided by b is 1 plus x. And this is your saturation saturation curve. So in this set of notes, we covered uh, different types of problems, but all about regression, linear and nonlinear regression formula.